So as an expert in American politics, I guess a lot of people have been asking you who will win the elections. <laughs> so what has been your answer so far? That's a $1 million question. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. Uh, if you look at the poll, Biden's leading, right? And uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, the mail-in voting, you know, the advanced mail-in voting, it seems that a lot of Democrats came out and votes. So basically, uh, you would think that uh, Biden has an advantage. But I would say that uh, thing could be uh, quite different if uh, uh, you know, unless you understand uh, the American politics for a Because uh, uh, in, in the U.S. election, it doesn't mean that when you have the majority of people coming out to vote that you would win, no. Something it, like four years ago. Yeah, like 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 four years ago, <laughs> right? Like years so ago. Uh, it is possible that uh, maybe because uh, the mail-in voting that coming in right now are a lot of Democrats, right? So you figure out that uh, maybe uh, uh, Democrats should win. But on the election day, I think a lot of the Republicans will come up and vote. So it might be very close at that time. Okay, so we need to know by that time. And the point is this: the point is that we still have the mail-in voting after the election. And uh, now it's a question right now that whether you will count that or not, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, the uh, I think the appeal court, the federal appeal court, just came out and say that uh, the state does not have the right to change the election law. Oh, and uh, it's debating right now, so right. so we don't know how it's going to go down. And the Supreme, Supreme Court right now is leaning toward the Republican or uh, conservative. Yes, you can say that, but that doesn't mean that they're going to cheat. No, I don't mean that, okay? <laughs> it means that uh, they might uh, incline to uh, design in a way that the Republican would be having the advantage. Right. Just uh, like that. Okay. So it's come to the important question. Besides that it's actually entertain people to watch American politics. <laughs> Are you sure? The, yes, I think it's entertain people, uh -huh. especially people in Thailand. Okay. But... Uh, it somehow affect us, right? If they change the president or they change the party that lead the government. Mm -hmm. This is interesting because uh, in the American election, it's about the American, right? The American is the one who votes. We don't have to vote, right? We can't vote, right? And they don't think of us, they think of themselves, right? But after they get the new election, after they get the new president, whatever he does affect the whole world, instead right. of us as well. I think that's why we need to understand how the, the new policy would come about, come about, especially that uh, you, you have only the, the Democrat and the Republicans, right? So if Trump come on a second term, I think uh, we will have uh, less uh, question because we know that Trump will follow whatever he has done before. And more years surprises? Ago. More surprises, <laughs> a lot of... Uh, Less uh, questions, yeah, more surprises. Uh, uh, unexpected thing, uh, right. something like that, the way he has been, right? But if Joe Biden becomes a president, I think, uh, first of all, I don't think that Joe Biden will come back uh, to, let's say, before, 19, uh, before uh, 2016, Obama time. Okay. I don't think so. So you don't think he will bring back a multilateral agreement and that Yes, kind of he will do that. Yes, he will do that. But I think he would have to follow what Donald Trump has started. You have to understand that uh, in the last four years, it, it, it has been a kind of uh, confrontation between the U.S. and China. Right. And this has been kind of big fear to the American people. And I think Joe Biden uh, cannot just abruptly uh, right. cancel that. He's going to have to follow through a little, but in a softer tone. And at the same time, he might uh, bring back the uh, multilateral things like uh, joining the PPT, uh, whatever it is. But that doesn't mean that it's going to change the attitude that American uh, is going to think that uh, the old way of uh, the old world order that the U.S. seems to be like a big brother, you know, taking care of the people of the other uh, developing countries is not going to be like that anymore. So we have to understand that uh, Joe Biden might try to be more multilateral. Right. And he may be trying to get the uh, uh, allies to join with the American. I mean, the American would not be isolated like in, in the Trump, uh, in the, uh, Trump time. But uh, we will be asked to perhaps uh, side with the U.S against uh, the other, meaning that, uh, for example, like Thailand, right. uh, we have been uh, playing game that we can be friend with China and we can be friend with the U.S. at the same time. But so far, isn't it every uh, administration, in a way, have been forcing 
other countries to choose side. That's what I'm saying because of this. So I think that uh, we will probably have to be asked to choose side a little bit more. We cannot uh, play uh, both hands with each side, okay? And that's going to be quite tough. And, and not only that, I think uh, because uh, China has been uh, dominantly up in the past four years, and I think U.S. is trying to contain China, right. and they will ask allies, Thailand, as well as Japan, Korea, to uh, size up against China, and we will be in a difficult position because uh, we we still have to do business with, with China, right? Although you know uh, we would like very much to be friendly with the U.S., but we cannot cut away with that, and uh, I think uh, you have to do by each country to see how they will be uh, brought back to the U.S. ally. But for Thailand, I think uh, maybe we have to see, look at the see in the form of the ASEAN. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe I think Biden will engage in ASEAN more than Trump. Trump just left ASEAN. You know, right. he, he, he didn't care much about ASEAN, but I think uh, he will come back. So right. based on your conversation with other academics, who do they prefer more, Biden or Trump? For what, for Thailand? Yeah. <laughs> I I don't think that's the right question. I think <laughs> well, you see, uh, whoever come in, we're gonna have to uh, start up the new strategy right. to deal with them. Okay, but let me put it this way. Okay, I say that if Trump's again, all right. Now we know we understand Trump for the past four years. So it's erratic, and uh, 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 his foreign policy is based on himself. <laughs> Unpre unpredictable. America first. <laughs> yeah, unpredictable. But uh, if we know how to play him, we'll, we'll be quite okay. Like China, you know, sometimes mm. uh, uh, China would prefer to have Donald Trump. Even really? Though, yes. I, I was going to ask you. I would think so because you know why? I think because uh, look at this, you know, uh, like like the last year about trade. Remember that? Right. Uh, they had the first first freight trade between China and, and the U.S. and President Xi. Promised that they will buy he China will buy more goods right. for the U.S. and so far he didn't do that he didn't uh, accomplish it. Biden said that's an empty uh, empty treat. promise yeah empty promise and she could get away with that see if you know how to play ah, with, with okay, Trump a little I bit see. you can get away you can right. get away so all you right can promise big things that doesn't really have to fall uh, no, through no if you please <laughs> him with, uh, if you please him with other things right for example like uh, even uh, Kim Jong Un. You know, sometimes they fight each other, and sometimes they are friendly with each other. And nowadays, we don't know that. You know, uh, a lot of people say that Kim Jong Un has been, you know, trying to increase his nuclear capacity. Mm -hmm. But Trump says it's okay because uh, he said that Kim is my friend, and he promised me he won't do that. And, and, and Kim can get away with that. So I think uh, with Trump, we at least we know how to handle him. Uh, but but uh, that okay, it will be difficult. It depends on uh, what he look at us and. Uh, in, in the past, Thailand is not the focus of uh, the U.S., so that's why we could get away with it. So I think it's better if we can keep Thailand at the low profile with Trump. But for Joe Biden, uh, I think he will try to engage Thailand in the ASEAN, you know. And uh, but the point is this: the point is that he's going to look into our record of uh, uh, democracy, human, right. human rights, you know. Uh, child labor. So he will care more about all those elements. Yes, all those and elements. And he will be called out if it's Joe Biden win the election. I'm sorry, if Joe Biden win the election? We will be, will be called out if Joe Biden win um, the election? Or not exactly, but somewhat. I, I would say that when if Joe Biden wins the election, it will be more traditional way of diplomacy. Right. Okay? And at least we know how to deal with that. All right? And... Uh, Joe Biden still need Pacific as a friend, okay? Joe Biden would like to build up the allies against China. So therefore, they will try to, this is a problem. This is why even if uh, Joe Biden becomes a president, he's gonna ask us to join in like a PPP, uh, might be revived again, the TPP, you know, tra Trans-Pacific Partnership, you know, we've changed the name by now, all right? And uh, we would probably have to be very careful because if our trade uh, it's with the U.S., you know, we have to make sure that the trade is not surplus so much. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be... So what I'm trying to say here is that I think uh, Joe Biden is going to follow uh, Trump in, the, in a way. 
So you okay. cannot but just not, wake but up not, one not, day but and but act like nothing r- happened. Right, but right. not but not exactly like a not softer approach, let me put it this way. But still still follow what Trump has started it. That's so what I'm afraid. Who will suit Thailand better in your perspective? Uh that's very difficult to say. It, it it's has its advantage in some and it advantage in some, okay? Uh I, I think uh, if let me put it this way, we have to have the new strategy for whoever becomes the new president, right. and that strategy will be geared toward one differently. Okay, if Trumps come in, we have certain strategy to deal with the person, the kind of him, the kind of foreign policy that he's kind of following. But if we have Joe Biden coming, we might have to change the style, we might have to change the approach. But we know that. It's going to be America first again. Okay, it's still America first. It's not like uh, before, like like it, like 2016. So uh, with that in play, you see, uh, with Joe Biden, maybe he's going to be less direct. Yes, he will be bring it back uh, all the the uh, manufacturing thing back to the chore. That's what he wants to do. But not everything. Okay, maybe just something that he he would take it uh, from time to. For example, now he mentioned that he wants to take all kinds of the uh, mech- uh, uh, medical uh, equipment because uh, of the virus. Okay, right. He wants to be the factory that produces medical uh, equipment back to the U.S. That is the beginning. So he will take step by step to go, and that will give us time to see how we could uh, deal with that. And it's just going to be complicated. And I think pandemic will give everyone time to, to prepare themselves because I think U.S. mostly right now just busy with their own domestic issues with pandemic and economy. And right, right. That's going to that's gonna be the idea. But, but I think uh, uh, w- the world will be <laughs> safer under Biden. <laughs> that, that's yes. for sure. Okay, <laughs> that's for sure. Because I don't think that uh, Biden will make any kind of a broad decision like that I and mean, it will be follow the diplomatic way and that give us all of us the whole world to understand the key thing is this i think that uh, because of trump the damage that he has done to the world uh it's not going to go away just because he he left the office right i think his legacy is going to stay the point is this i think that every country is, is going to be suspicious about the u.s foreign policy how long it's going to be like that? Right. It's going to change again after after Biden. How many years Biden is going to be president? What about after after Joe Biden president will be Republican and will be back to uh, Trump's side again? Because I think Trump legacy is going to stay on at least for uh, five six years. Yeah, it's not going to go away. We had Dr. Um, Tang Niran sitting with us several days ago. We were talking about world order, and mm-hmm. I asked him where Thailand is, mm-hmm. and he said that with the new world order, no one is the real leader. So everybody just have to pair with each other and try to make it happen. What do you think about that? Is it because Donald Trump has somewhat stir, or I don't want to use the word destroy maybe too much, but uh, kind of hurt? The world order, how it was. Yeah, because uh, I don't know how, how many times, how much time do I have? You know, in the past <laughs> 70 years, all right, uh, the U.S. has been like uh, leading the hegemony, the okay, Western hegemony. And, and that was like a pan-Western uh, uh, Pacific thing, meaning they're led by the U.S. And it seems to be like a, like a uh, bilateral, uh, you know, interest between the U.S. and major European country. But now, since Trump came in, it seems that Trump cut that off, okay? Uh, he didn't want to participate in NATO. He was talking that the UN is not very useful. Uh, the climate change uh, is not uh, the thing that he cares for. You know, he doesn't pay money. He doesn't want to pay money for that. So that's kind of uh, pushed the, uh, the ally to try to depend on themselves. And when they start trying to depend, to themself, when depend on themselves, right. and then you have, uh, let's say you have Joe Biden coming in. And Joe Biden said, "Come back, you know. We want to. People and, already used we want to re-engage with you themselves. again, right? We right. want to re-engage with you. Come on, it's okay. We're gonna be like that. And uh, think about this, you know. And, and all the allies must think that. See, Trump is not the only not the only crazy man. 
the reason that he won <laughs> is because almost half of the country, yes. American, agree with him. Yes. Right? Yeah. Otherwise, he wouldn't be. Uh, he might even win this time. We don't know that, right? So Joe Biden cannot just come out and cut everything out of Trump's way and try different. This is my point. So um, my point is that I think Trump legacy is going to stay on, but with the softer tone. It's going to be like, a, what do you call that? The light Trump, a Trump light, like a light beer, you know, not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, something like that. The light, light version of Yeah, Trump. light version of Trump. <laughs> like that. But not like uh, back in, in Obama time. No, I, I don't think that's, that's my prediction. It's going to be like that. So back to U.S. elections. So far, there are around 18 million early voters and uh, 50, 80, right, right, 18 million right, early right. voters and 50 million of them are million voters. Right. What is the significance of these numbers and who do you think will benefit from this early voting? I think the, the, the Democrats, uh, because Trump has already said from the beginning that he, he assumed that the mail-in ballot that comes after the election time, the, the election day, uh, is not honest one. Okay, and he's going to challenge that. All right. So the Democrat has been kind of promoting uh, the, the Democrats to people to come out and vote. You know, as 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 early as they can, and that's why the voting came out. But you have to look at it this way: we see a lot of uh, mail-in voting now, about eighty, right? right? Now they predicted this year that uh, the people come out who to vote would be more than in 19, uh, more than is four years ago. La four years ago, it was 130 million, 135 million people vote. This time, they think it's about 150 million, 150, 160 million. Now, it seems like uh, right now you have the vote about 60, uh, about half, because 60 and 60 and, no, six, 70, 80, right? 80 and 80 and 160. So now you have almost half of the total vote coming out. Right. right. Now, this one, okay, at this time, it seems that if you count it right now, it may be a lot of Democrats because Democrats likes to, not like to, they, they wanted to come and have an early voting time. But the Republicans, they stay home. They don't, they don't want to vote yet. They'll do it in person. So they will do, yeah, they will vote in person, okay, on the third, right? So when you, maybe when you count it at that time, it might be close. Right. Because I think the mail-in right now, I would say that two out of three would be Democrat. And one of uh, one third would be Republican, but, but on the day of the voting, two thirds will be Republican and one will be Democrat. So it come out another half, right? Another half of uh, 150. It should be close. So you never know, you know. That's why they have to decide it on the uh, at the uh, swing stage. It will come down to that. It will come down to that. They even say that. They even say that. You know, the American they like statistics. They even say that if the pattern of the vote. It's the same like that, like four years ago. I mean, right. Republican for Republican like that, but only three states shift, uh, namely uh, Arizona, uh, Michigan, and uh, Wyoming. Okay, the electoral vote will be two sixty nine to two sixty nine. Meaning very that close. no, we're not very close. Meaning that no one wins the election. Right. Which means that the election will have to be brought to be decided by the Congress. So if there's a tie, 269 and 269, 269 it will go to the Congress. Congress, right. And in the Congress, uh, the House will select the president based oh. on the highest score of the two candidates. All right. And the Senate will select the vice president. So step-by-step is, is, step sort of thing. Is there yeah. such an event before? Yeah, it's been done a few times back. Uh, one was in night uh, was in the nineteenth uh, century. So, so there's times. a chance that you will have president from one party and vice president from another party. Theoretically, yes, you can have that, but I don't think it will happen. That would be fun. That would be fun, <laughs> but I don't think it will happen. I don't think it will happen. But yes, theoretically, you can have that. Okay. Right. Right. All in all, Thailand just have to prepare. Doesn't matter who comes up. Right. I think we should prepare, but we shouldn't uh, be nervous or anything. I think we should uh, embrace whatever happened because I think uh, we can handle. You know, uh, if uh, they try to push us so much, I think we can join more with ASEAN. We can say that this is a Thailand policy. This is ASEAN policy, and then we have a bargaining power because with ASEAN we have six hundred million people with a lot of uh, resources, and they also need that as well. All right. So I think that's the kind of thing that we should keep. It's like a, a regional approach. You right. Know?
that would help us survive. But if we want to use ASEAN, what's it called, ASEAN power as a leverage, that means ASEAN really have to stick together. But yes. has that been the case so far though? Well, in ASEAN, you have uh, neutral, you have left and you have right, you have like Vietnam, you have like the Philippines, you have like uh, Singapore that's lean to like, the US, and you have like Thailand that's kind of neutral, and then you have like uh, uh, Myanmar, and then that goes to uh, China. But I think that that is the, like, the test for ASEAN to have to be able to come up with right. a solidity in order to survive the whole region. So every, the game changed, everything has changed, you know. The game, uh, the US changed, we have to change the game as well. And, and that's why I think the US election affects everybody in the whole world, affects every country. And that's why we should pay attention to that, to see.